Hi guys, all right, so uh, the second design we're gonna be doing is some cute little mittens with some greenery and a wood grain background. This is like lots of stuff for one design, but there's different elements that you can pull out of this design to use with different things. So what we're gonna do is basically tackle two different things with this one, but you're gonna learn a lot. So we'll do the wood grain background first. Um, this one you can use on its own as just a regular nail design, or if you wanted to pair this with something else, like the greenery and the mittens, or if you wanted to do the wood grain with some stars, some glitters, whatever you want to do with these, there's lots that you can do with just that background. And then if you wanted to do just the greenery and the mittens on their own, or layer it with a texture like this, there's lots of options for you, okay? So let's start with the wood grain. And then we will move on to the greenery and the mittens. All right, lots to learn. Let's get started. Um, so for the wood grain background, I've got four colors that I'm going to be using, which I don't know if you can see because the light is probably shining on these lids. I'm going to be using options color Cafe Creme, Sweet Maple, Maple Sugar, and Divine Cocoa. I'm also going to be using a little bit of Luxio Gloss. And away we go. Let me grab some wipes and a bit of alcohol here. So I'm going to start with one coat first of the Cafe Creme. This will be my background color. And what I'm gonna do with this one too, like wood has a like a lots of variegation to it, lots of different shades, different colors. I'm gonna pull a little bit of which one is this? Sweet maple. I'm just gonna pull a little bit of that through the cafe creme before I cure it, just to start creating a little bit of different tones in that already. This doesn't need to be perfect because we are going to come back and add more to it, okay? So let's cure that. We're gonna do not a full cure, but like about a 15 second cure. I am using the LED light, so we don't need to wait two minutes, which is a beautiful thing. Okay. So we'll come back in with our Cafe Creme color. I'm going to add a second coat. And you can see we've got a little bit of highs and lows from that initial coming through. So now I'm going to take my tiny brush. I think I'm going to grab my, just my zero size. I'm going to start adding some lines into the uncured beige that I've got as my background. I'm just going to start dragging color through here. Different tones of browns. Just bring these down like this. There's no like exact science as to where these need to go. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of dark into this as well. In random places. And I'm just dragging these colors through and I'm kind of creating these little pockets of color. And what I'm going to do when I'm happy with where I've got my colors placed, I'm just going to come back in and brush right over it with my regular gel brush. Okay, so let's start with this. Now my brush is clean and dry. And I'm just going to lightly brush over all of this and blend it through. And 
as you can see, as I do that, we're blending the colors together and creating a much softer effect. So we're creating the grains of the wood, but we're blending it all at the same time. And we don't want this to be like too stripey looking. So I'm just going to brush through a little bit on a few spots that look a little bit heavier. And just take your time with this, get the color right, get the blend right, how you're happy with it. Okay. All right, so let's freeze cure this again for a couple of seconds. And then we're gonna come back in with our darker brown and add a little bit more detail, put a few little knots into the wood. I'm going to put down a coat of Luxio Gloss and this will allow us to have a little bit more slip and glide with the darker color and let it blend out better. Let me bring that up here. So what I'm going to do is just add some color darker and we're just going to pull it through and kind of think of where you're going to place your pattern too right so with this design I've got everything coming from the top corner I don't want to put too many like design elements up here with the wood grain because it's going to get a little bit buried so I put one up here uh, maybe we'll put one down towards the bottom if you're just doing this as a regular nail you can go ahead and put these wherever you would like wherever you feel that you need to add in a little bit more um, a little bit more color and a little bit more depth. But you've obviously got wood obviously has like knots in it and some color variants so we don't want to have everything be one solid color. Let's put one over here. Maybe we'll add something over in the corner here. You can see that kind of coming together, which is good. This is very similar to how to do an easy marble. We're just creating a different tone and a different look using the shades of brown. So I think I'm just gonna put one right about here. I think that's probably lots because we're going to have lots of other design elements going on within this too. So there's your easy wood grain. Now of course you can change up the colors to fit the palette that you happen to have. I chose to go with obviously a brown tone. If you guys wanted you could um, do more of like a washed birch look with whites and grays which would be super pretty as well. Um, that would give a whole different spin on your design. So if you want to play around with that, you could use like some grays and beiges and blacks and some whites to give your, your background palette a really washed out, earthy kind of birch tone. That would be amazing too. So it really is up to you how you guys want to do this one. But the wood grain isn't too hard. Once you've kind of mastered how to do it, you can really change up the tone and change up the colors of basically everything that you're using, which is really cool. Um, okay, so let's get our palette ready now for the green 
and the mittens, okay? So what we're gonna need is gel play colors. I've got yellow, uh, green, brown, white, red, and black. That's what we're gonna be using to make these designs. And I'm gonna use a little bit more Luxio gloss. So let's put some colors on our palette here. Green, some yellow. And I'm gonna be mixing up the green, yellow, and white to create the different color variations uh, for the, the uh, pine needles the needles, whichever sort of tree it is, I'm not sure. Um, so we'll be mixing those three up to create the color differences. I'll just put these colors out now too, so I've got them. I'm choosing gel play for this too, because when I'm painting the needles, the green, I really want the colors to stay in place. You could use uh, like Options or Luxio or a thinner consistency gel, but the colors just won't, uh, they just won't stay in place as nicely. So I'm definitely sticking with my gel play colors because they won't run around on me. Um, okay, so let's draw our branches first. So because I chose to go with um, the corner here, I'm going to start my branches from the right hand corner and pull them to the left. If you want to work from the other direction, you completely can. So we'll start in the corner here, and we'll go down on the side, bring one out the middle, whoops, now these branches, you don't need a really, really heavy, thick line for them, um, but you do want to be able to see them. We're going to be covering a lot of them with green anyway um, so they don't need to be crazy big they're just more there for like a guide and by the time we get a lot of the green on there they're going to be covered up so as long as the color is dark and it's there that's perfect so I'm going to freeze cure this for a couple of seconds okay so let's start adding our needles on these. So we're just gonna start with the basic green to start and then we're gonna be adding the color depth afterwards. I'm just using a really, really light touch, not a ton of pressure on my brush. And I'm just going to place the needles here. Um, you don't need to have a solid coverage because we're going to be coming back in with more color, different shades of color. So it doesn't need to be 100% coverage at this point. We're just starting out with something here that's going to give us our base and then we can go back and add more depth with all the other colors we're going to be putting on this branch. And we'll just come around the top here. And just look at your work before you freeze cure each step. See if there's anywhere you need to add a little bit more or maybe it's not quite balanced out enough. Okay, so let's freeze cure that. So while that's freeze curing, we're gonna mix our green with a bit of yellow. And we're just gonna make a lighter green. I love mixing my colors too, you guys. Don't be afraid to do that. 
Um, just because the gel plate looks like it only has a few colors, there's tons that you can do with it. So you're not stuck to just, oh, I only have one green and one yellow. No, just mix them up, make a color that you want, and do that. I'm just going to make a little bit more here. I don't have quite enough. Okay, so let's come back in with our brush and add a little bit more color in. And you can see right away as we start with another color, we're going to be getting so much more depth and color in this design with, I mean, if you want to use just solid green, you totally can, like just the one color. Um, but I prefer to have a little bit more than one shade. If you're doing needles with just one color, if you keep going back in to fill in spaces and add more of just one shade, you're going to end up with a lot of green, just like a blob of green. There won't be a lot of depth happening or much definition. So I personally like to have a few different shades going on. It just creates the illusion of a bit more of a realistic looking branch, I think. So we'll just keep adding color into this. So you can see what a difference that's made already with that second color, the addition of the other color, it's definitely added more into this instead of just one level of green. All right, so back in the light we go, and then we'll make a slightly darker green. So we're gonna take our green and our brown. Whoops, too much brown, not enough green. And we'll make a darker green. There we go. So let's add in a little bit more color. Which again, this just adds one more step, one more element of color for you. And, you know, make sure that you twist your work around a little bit. Make sure there's no big gaps. If there's somewhere that just needs a little bit more color into it, add that in there. Don't be afraid to just sit back for a second and take a look at things and see how they look. There's all our color in there. We've got three shades of mixed green. Our branches are covered nicely, but you can still see them. Perfect, all right. Let's cure that. Let me get some clean wipes here. So now we'll come in with our red and add a couple of little mittens. I've left this nice big space here so we can add those in, depending obviously what direction you've put your green, you can put your mittens wherever you want to. And I'm just using Gel Play Red because I love this red. Um, if you are more comfortable again working with a slightly different consistency product, go right ahead. Um, I just stuck with the red because it's a beautiful red and it plays off the green and the brown really nicely. Um, I'm just going to put my mittens on a bit of an angle. Maybe one a little bit higher than the other. And 
I think that one's probably a little bit too low. They're going to get covered up there. The beautiful thing about gel is that you can change your mind about where you would like stuff to go. Let's put this one kind of over here maybe. We'll cover up a little bit of the green. And I've kind of put mine on a bit of an angle um, because I'm going to put the string hanging from the top corners. Okay, and then we'll just add in the little thumb right there. And then on this one, we'll do the same thing. These can overlap a little bit. Again, we'll just add in the little thumb. I'm just going to touch up this bottom here a little bit, make them level out. Cool. All right, little mittens. Um, let's throw that in the light just for a second or two. I'm going to add in a little bit of shading on these guys. Um, so Luxio Gloss back out here. I'm going to need a little bit of a clear black. So we're gonna take our black gel play, mix a little bit of that in. I don't need much of this. That's probably even more than I need, but we just need a little bit of clear black to add a little bit of definition onto some things. And I'm also going to take a little bit of white, um, make a clear white, just so I can add a little bit of a highlight. So we're going to highlight and low light the mittens just a tiny bit. So our black, we will go right around the bottom here. And just kind of pat that out so you don't have like a line of black, but this is just to add in a little bit of shading just where the two mittens kind of meet at the bottom. Right around here at the bottom. And just blend it a bit. And then we're gonna put a little bit kind of around the thumb. And we'll do the same thing on this guy. A little bit of shading just down around the side here. You can see what a difference that makes. Just add a little bit of detail. Makes all the difference in the world. Um, so let's come back in with our clear white. And a little tiny bit of that is just going to go right in the centers. Just to add in a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to wipe that excess off. Whoops. It's very subtle, but at the same time, it has a huge impact. Okay, so let's freeze cure that again. Then we're gonna add a little bit of detail onto the mittens and some fuzzy little fluff and the string going around the tree. I've got my tiny, tiny little dot tool, like it's really tiny, it's the smallest one I've got. I'm just gonna take my gel play white and add a couple of little dots right in the middle. Of both of them. Right there. And then I'm just going to add some little lines for little detail on them. Doesn't need to be super crazy or anything. We're working on a very 
small space, so we don't need to overcrowd it too much. And then we'll do the same thing on this guy. And because the mittens are layered here, we're just gonna sort of give that illusion of a corner on that one. Okay. Now we will take our black and I'm gonna have my loop coming up and over the branch and down on that side. So this will come straight up. And just over and kind of disappear over the top. And then this one can just kind of go up and get lost in the green. So they're hanging over the branch. I'm gonna freeze cure this again. And then we'll come back and add our white on top of the mittens. So back to gel play white, and I'm just going to draw a little line right here, right on the top, and I'm using a little bit of excess gel right there because I'm going to uh, drag it out and make little fuzzies. So we're just going to go with our brush in and pull out the excess product and give it the appearance of having little fluffies on the top. Just like that. And again, super light touch. Because if you push on this too hard, you'll end up moving all the gel where you don't want it, and then you won't have any left for the top of the mitten. Okay. Now, I did one shiny, the demo one that I did for you guys. Let's do this one in matte and see what a difference it makes. Because with the cute little cactuses that we did, it looks really good either way. So I'm thinking this one will look really good matted out as well. So let's put a matte top coat on that one. Why not? Let's do it. Because I think it'll be adorable matte as well. And if you wanted to add a little bit of extra snow on the green, you could. Or if you wanted to add in some sparkles or some rhinestones, I mean, there's really no limit to what you can do with this. I've kind of given you the a really good start off vantage point with learning the wood grain and the green and the mittens. So there's lots more that you guys can do with this design above and beyond just this. So let's impatiently wait for a few more seconds and see how this will turn out matte. So um, you guys, you've got lots to work on. You've got your cute little Christmas cactus and wood grain with mittens. Um, post your work on the page. I'm dying to see what you guys can do. And there it is, matte. Ooh, that's really awesome, matted out as well. It gives the wood grain a whole different finish. All right, so let's pop this guy on here. We'll complete the set for you. And there you have it. There's your two designs, a couple different ways. Love them to pieces. All right, you guys, um, post away. I'd love to see your work. I can't wait to see what you guys can come up with. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys really soon on Facebook. Bye.